Hey everyone, it's Barry. Welcome to My Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. Do you know what these are? These are penguins uh, here in the UK. Uh, in Australia, I believe they're called Tim Tams and I don't know what you call them in other parts of the world. It is basically a chocolate covered biscuit. There is two biscuits in there. Boom, sandwiched together with a buttercream and a chocolate coating. I've actually done standard size ones of these on the channel years ago, but we're gonna try and do a giant one. Now the question I hear you ask is how big are we gonna make this Tim Tam? Do I grab myself an industrial size bucket thing and put a handle on it and make it into a fake mug? Or do I go on Amazon and find a big mug? In that box right there. I totally went for the dinosaur joke one. Right, I've had this giant mug since we moved house. Uh, it's been a plan of mine to do a giant Tim Tam for quite a long time. Literally, if you Amazon uh, giant mug, uh, you get a load of different variations, but I went with this one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your, oh. I hope you'll agree that that's quite a big mug. I mean, I could have gone much bigger and made something custom, as I say, but this, I wanted to make it accessible. So if you've got a friend of yours that's a fan of Tim Tams, you can do this yourself if it works and, uh, and, and, and that's it. <laughs> so I'll give it a wash and all that stuff. Oh look, it's faded. Ah. So I just show you with another penguin. Effectively what you do is you nibble off the opposite corner of uh, the Tim Tam or the penguin, dunk it in where the hole is and go and suck the hot drink through uh, the penguin and effectively you then gobble it up, which might be hard to do on a giant scale. It will probably fail. It will be so big that I don't know. I mean, yeah, I really don't know. I mean, the, the actual width once you put the chocolate on there, it's not gonna be that big, but I'm thinking as long as I can get a corner in it, that's all right. Originally, I was gonna like put one on here and divide it in two and then stack them on top of each other, but I thought this, with its nice curves, is a perfect shape for one Tim Tam biscuit, so we'll double it up. Granulated sugar rather than caster sugar, a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier. And there is our butter, which is at room temperature, but it's still a little bit butch. We need to beat it together to cream it. All right, so I'm just gonna get some eggs now. One, two. And I'm gonna whisk this together. Oh. Kinda looks like scrambled egg, right? <laughs> Not very appealing right now. So let's chuck in our cocoa powder. Now this will probably go everywhere if I use the whisk, so I'm gonna go back to my spatula. Just scrape that through. Oh yeah. Now it looks like chocolate scrambled egg. All right, so that's mostly incorporated in. You still got a bit of marbling from the butter, but that's all right because we're now gonna add in our plain flour. Bit of salt. And again, I'm just gonna fold it. I'm gonna whiz this up right now. Once it absorbs, you can have a bit more fun with it, but we just wanna get it all in there. It will literally antique the pugs if I try and uh, whisk it right now. <laughs> All right, I'm getting my ring off now and like just really wanna, cause it is gonna be a dough, see? Look at this, big old slab. But we wanna just kind of make sure it's all mingled in and I feel like the only way I can do that is with my hand. Right, <laughs> let's press the dough down. I'm gonna start to shape it into a rectangle shape. All right, I'm really happy with that. There's a couple of marks, but I've leveled it out as best I can. And ultimately it's gonna get covered both inside and outside in chocolate. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen here. I mean, it's gonna get hot, it's in the oven, but other than that, it could go blah, blah. Let's find out. See you in a minute. I've made a second batch of dough, just repeating those steps. I'll bake that again, and hopefully we'll have two big old biscuits. I just realized I turned my microphone off. <laughs> I said, yeah, baby, yeah. All right, let's make the uh, buttercream filling. This is 500 grams of icing sugar. It's already in there because otherwise it would go poof, avalanche on the lens. And this is 500 grams of butter that I've just blasted in the microwave for about 30 seconds just to soften it up. So I'm just gently incorporating that in. All right, so that's just about incorporated in, but we're gonna add more powdery stuff anyway, so we might as well get it in now. 
This is some uh, Horlicks, aka uh, malted drink powder. So I'm gonna go for five tablespoons of that stuff. And one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of cocoa powder. Now we mix the malt and the cocoa in with that. And we really wanna do this until it's nice and smooth, which is where a stand mixer would definitely help. <laughs> but I just love doing it manually. Just really wanna work it through. And as you mix it, the heat of it will merge all the powders into it and you'll be left with a nice fluffy buttercream. Just make sure there's no lumps in it. Make sure you don't eat it all. I've just transferred that to a smaller bowl. I'm going to stick it in the fridge for the time being just to help it firm up and be a bit less maneuverable when we spread it. Ah, ha, ha, that's hot. Uh, this <laughs> like a mix here of milk and dark chocolate, just a small scaled down amount of what I'll use later for hopefully an epic pour, but we're just going to get it on one of the sides. So I'm not going to go too crazy. This will actually add strength to the biscuit as well. Why am I finding this so therapeutic? <laughs> All right, that'll do. <laughs> the buttercream is out the fridge and by putting it in there, look, you can see how rigid that's gone. So that's gonna act as a glue and hold it together. And we can really get a good shape around the edges. So in true giant food style, let's montage the rest. That's actually pretty good. This means no filter, hashtag no filter and all that, but yeah, it'll do. I've had worse. I used to work on a building site, trust me. I'm gonna try and bite the ends off it. I don't know if that's gonna work. It might be quite hard. Mm. I'm got, I'm got it right. And then the opposite end. Oh, that is sensational. I don't wanna dunk it. You've got to dress to impress when you can potentially get soaked. Um, I'm going to be careful with this. That has cooled down, so it will not scold me. It's still warm though. Um, and I hope if this fails, I can salvage some of it so the family can try it. Either way, you must try this recipe and be sure to check out the rest of the giant food playlist and let me know down below any ideas you've got. <laughs> what do I look like? Oh my gosh. We're just going to stick the edge into it and then <laughs> <laughs> it's getting very. Oh, I've got a moustache. <laughs> Gonna try the opposite end. I've got a 
to be honest, I'm getting my own little mini Tim Tam at the top there. It tastes sensational. And if I'm sensible, which of course I am dressed like this, I'm going to salvage it and then I'll let some friends and family have some. <sighs> well, you've got a little uh, something on your face there. <laughs> The slam is optional, but I think the penguin slash Tim Tam would be amazing for a birthday cake alternative. So if you know someone that enjoys them, like you, mate, uh, why not make it for them? And if you do, send me a picture at my Virgin Kitchen. I'd love to see your attempts. I'll do a full write-up on the website, so check it out, and uh, that's it. Bye.